Hey there YouTube, welcome back to another uh, black powder update. This is actually a double black powder update because I've not only finished my Brunswick uh, horse artillery which is here, but I've also finished my Brunswick foot artillery which is just off to the side here. So uh, I've decided to just do one video and uh, put them both into the same video. Uh, so it might be a little bit longer than uh, an artillery, uh, you know, showing you an artillery battery uh, will normally take but then you're getting two for the price of one video so uh, let's start off with the uh, the horse artillery then so these guys are uh, front rank and perries and these guys are the front rank uh, now this is these are front rank crew uh, these are perry crew and the guns are both perries now the reason why uh, they've got uh, two perries guns is because uh, the perries only do uh, British guns with their uh, with their Brunswickers, uh, and uh, it's quite well known that the Brunswick uh, artillery was mostly made up of uh, old Prussian, uh, Austrian, and uh, some French guns, uh, which they brought uh, in auction. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more when we get to the foot artillery. Uh, now, whether they actually used British guns uh, is uh, really unknown. Uh, it's possible that they did. Um, in, in, in my sort of reckoning, I thought, well, um, these British guns are uh, pretty lightweight, um, the same calibre, and uh, for, horse art for horse artillery that, that want to be fast and mobile, uh, if they were given the opportunity to uh, be given a fresh battery of modern, slightly more modern uh, and like British guns, they, they would uh, jump at the chance of, of, of uh, having those rather than uh, lumping around the heavy older guns. Uh, so that's kind of my sort of uh, reckoning behind it, because obviously, like I say, it's not uh, not much is really known about what artillery they actually used um, directly at, uh, within the sort of 100 days campaign. Um, and uh, like I say, it's all sort of conjectural, really. Uh, so... Uh, let's get start giving you a, a closer look at the stuff. Now, I did actually, I, I did actually have to do quite a lot of uh, research into uh, into into doing these guys. Um, I mean, obviously the uniforms were easy enough to find. Um, I had to delve around a little bit to find uh, find the colour of the guns. Um, it's not really a sort of a British blue, sort of the, 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 the sort of the uh, blue that the, the British used in um, the Peninsula. It was, it's, it's a lot more sort of uh, brighter than that. Uh, so I, en I ended up using uh, the old classic, um, which I actually picked up uh, from Foundry, which is Toon Blue, which seemed to be the absolute perfect colour. Um, now obviously that's uh, toned down a little bit by the gun being a little bit dirty, but it, it really did work out being a, a, a really nice uh, colour choice. So uh, the other thing that I kind of found out now, I'm pretty sure that these uh, commanding officers are probably um, out of date. Um, that they're probably from an earlier, an earlier period. But I did actually find a list of um, battery commanders um, for the uh, Brunswick artillery. Uh, so I gave uh, the batteries um, two commanding officers uh, from those lists. Now, like I say, they're probably not correct, uh, and, and uh, I haven't actually found any proper references to say that th this particular person was in charge of a battery. But in this particular case, uh, I've just gone for the for the battery captains. So for the horse artillery, we have a Captain von Heinemann. Uh, and of course, I'll go into the foot artillery when we get to it. So let's show you my first battery. So this is the... Uh, zoom in a little bit. This is the, uh, the front rank crew. Uh, four crew. Uh, the gun, of course, is Perry's, like I mentioned. Uh, I, I've tried to... I actually use like some das clay on, on a lot of these bases to try and build the ground up a little bit. I mean, you can see that the ground's a little bit raised. And I tried to make each base a little bit different. Um, this is kind of like a, it's meant to be sort of like an open ground. Uh, not too, too muddy. Uh, but if you start sort of, ch uh, sort of churning into the ground, then you're, you're going to come across uh, some, some dampness. So that's why there's uh, some mud on the, uh, the wheels of the gun. And uh, I'll just show you the crew. So no officer on this base because, as you know, uh, I always have one officer per battery. 
Uh, there's actually no officer figures uh, at all uh, available. Uh, so I ended up converting uh, two of my spare. I think they were both light officers actually. Uh, so here we have the uh, the match guy. Here we have the um, the priming guy. Uh, now these guys are, are uh, I've arranged them in the style of a British gun crew because I thought, well, if they were given British guns, they would be trained up to use them like the British would. Uh, and obviously with the with the um, you know, the foot artillery, they've got the French guns. So I've obviously arranged those to fire them in the way that the French would. Um, so there we have the, uh, this is like a loading uh, loading crew, so we have the guy bringing up the charge, we have the uh, the guy with the uh, the plunger ready to plunge around and after, and then obviously this guy will come up and uh, plug the hole when the, before the charge goes in. Uh, so that is the first uh, battery, or the first gun, then we'll go for the second one. Now the second one um, I kind of sort of built up a, a sort of a rough wall, a rough low wall, uh, and these guys are running the gun up. And uh, I've got to say, I had to uh, go back to the Perry site and get a reference picture for how the crew was set up on this gun because it was quite complicated to try and work it out. Um, but you can see that there's uh, they're basically running the gun up. Uh, they're going to run it up to the wall. Uh, there's the. Um, the officer. Now this guy, like I say, was a uh, a light infantry officer. Um, he actually had a soft cap on. Um, I actually uh, snipped the shako off of another figure, um, and then I made his horsehair uh, top out of uh, plastic putty. And also, for some reason, this guy had a um, a missing hand. Uh, it, it must have been some sort of uh, moulding issue. Uh, or casting issue rather, uh, so I actually made his hand out of plastic putty too uh, and obviously uh, I just drew on the skull and crossbones because obviously uh, I took, uh, took off the light infantry insignia uh, but I was really chuffed with how it turned out actually, how it turned out and I also made his um, his strapping out of uh, plastic putty too um, so yeah I was really chuffed with those and I think overall I'm pretty chuffed with, with, with the whole base actually um, you can see they've got um, a mixture of uh, grenades and actually these guys have all got grenades on the backs of theirs but the front rank ones actually have um go back to those for a second they actually have uh, skull and crossbones on the back of theirs which is kind of cool so that is the first battery and now for the second battery the foot artillery so we'll bring those guys in so there's one, there's second, so I'll just zoom out a little bit, so there they are. So these guys again are uh, parries and uh, front rank, and this time the gun, the, both the guns are front rank, uh, because I actually brought uh, the French guns uh, actually from uh, the same time as I brought the crews. Um, now obviously these French guns are pretty chunky. Um, I'd say they're chunkier than the um, Perry's equivalent. Uh, go into the battery commander actually. Now like I say these guys are um, probably uh, out of date but this this particular battery's captain is a guy called Auguste Vendorini or Vendorini. So perhaps he's got a, a bit of Italian blood in him, that guy. Um, so let's go in and uh, give you a closer look. So we'll start off with the uh, front rank one again. So like I say, we have the French front rank gun. Again, this crew is kind of loading. So we have the, um, the fuse guy, the match guy, the loader and sponger, and the guy bringing up the round, all the, all the uh, cartridge. And again, this base is, I think this one's more or less flat. It's got a little bit of uh, a raised area in the middle. You can kind of see it there, actually. And I also put some uh, some digging marks as well, from where it's kind of slightly not quite even ground. So when the gun fired, it 
uh, dug a chunk out uh, as it sort of uh, went backwards. You can kind of see the uh, the grooves. And uh, yeah, really happy with uh, the way that these uh, guys come out now. Something that I noticed was that the uh, front rank guys are uh, pretty chunky in comparison to the Perry's guys. Um, but as long as you don't mix them, uh, they, they, they look okay. Uh, so that's what I had to go with. I had to go with uh, the uh, all the front ranks and all the uh, Perry's uh, on their own bases. So that is the first battery. Now we have the uh, battery of the officer on. Uh, so again, another French gun. Now with, uh, with these French guns, um, the actually the Prussians actually um, when they um, decided to, to form their their uh, army, they had absolutely no experience of um, artillery uh, know-how uh, whatsoever. Um, so when they actually were forming their uh, their first artillery. Uh, batteries um, they were basically using uh, old Prussian and I think even a, a few Austrian guns uh, and they actually ended up buying a, a bunch of French guns at auction uh, I think it was 1809 uh, so they so basically the, the, the whole arsenal was made up of these older uh, chunkier guns um, now like I say when it came to the 100 days campaign it's not really um, known exactly what their artillery uh, was comprised of um, but there's certainly a really good chance that there was uh, French guns there um, and uh, like I say it's, it's completely uh, unknown whether they used any British guns but um, like I say the Perry's uh, packs came with British guns so I decided to give those to the to the horse artillery because uh, these I uh, wouldn't like to be a horse artillery guy uh, pulling around these heavy beasts um, even though they're like only a six pounder it looks as if they've got like a carriage of a, of a 12 pounder with a six pounder cannon um, and now the officer uh, again this is a, a slight conversion uh, of a, um, a light infantry officer converted into an artillery officer uh, again I didn't have to change his shaker this time but I did change his uh, pom pom on top and I also put his uh, strapping on, his gold strapping. Um, but other than that, this guy was uh, more or less complete. So I was pretty chuffed with that. Because um, like I say, there's absolutely there's no uh, actual artillery officer figures available. And uh, again, I, I uh, painted on his uh, grenade, on his Shaco. Uh, because these guys have got pr a pretty easy uh, uh, insignia to, to, to copy. So, and these guys obviously are loading as well. Um, and then there's this on this one we've got a slight uh, little mix up of figures here we've got now this guy really should be over the other side um, because if they're firing the gun uh, the French way um, but I stuck him in the wrong position uh, and I couldn't get him back off again and this guy uh, who's about to plug the thing I mean I suppose I could have just stuck him on the other side but I'd stuck him there and, and it was too late to pull him off and I didn't want to sort of ruin the base so unfortunately he has to just stay there but he's kind of basically going to plug the hole um, so that if there's any embers uh, still alight uh, after the, the first sponging, um, they're not going to set the, cut, the the charge off prematurely. Because obviously he's going to put that into the barrel and then this guy's going to ram it home. Um, and then uh, he'll actually put the fuse in. And then obviously there's the match, the match guy's actually uh, in his correct position. So I don't know why he would be stood there. Perhaps he's just slightly out of position. Uh, and, and they want to get the gun firing quick so um, rather than uh, him wasting time going around to the other side uh, he's going to actually just do it from that side and then move, move around before the gun's fired but uh, yeah so he's the corporal should know better than to be in the wrong position um, but you know things happen in the heat of battle don't they so yeah so that's the, uh, the end of this video hope you enjoyed it uh, next up um, on the uh, plans is I'm going to start doing uh, the lead battalion. Uh, I probably always give myself a, a day or two uh, off from painting um, after I finish a battalion. Um, this one's it's not been too bad actually. Um, I know it's kind of like two two uh, projects uh, or two um, different um, work workouts uh, being put into one, um, but they were pretty quick to paint. 
Uh, I think I, I think I took. Uh, I basically finished them yesterday, uh, all but all apart from the uh, finishing off the basing. Um, I think the crews took me about a session and a half each. Um, the guns I did really quickly. I, I, I did. I think I knocked off all the all four guns uh, within a couple of hours. Um, obviously, they're really easy to paint. Uh, just slap slap the blue on, um, paint painting the uh, the black metal, and then um give them a varnish you know a, a couple of coats of varnish uh, gloss and uh, matte uh, so yeah i'm really happy with them let's just bring them all into the shop now uh just to finish off so there we go all four guns all two batteries and another uh, tick off the uh, brunswick to-do list I'm now extremely close uh, to finishing. Um, when I complete the uh, the lead, uh, I will literally just have co uh, command figures to do, uh, and 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 then uh, I'll be uh, probably doing some sort of showcase of the entire division. So um, again, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've uh, you know, big thank you to all my subscribers and stuff. Um, I, I am uh, slowly uh, clawing back a few extra subscribers uh, after my massive i think i had like eight subscribers just disappear now well i was talking to a friend and he was saying that um they, they could have been like um you know youtube cracking down on those um those people that like to post uh sort of uh, porn sites on your uh, uh in your comments um now i tend to uh either block or or um just get rid of the uh, actually, more likely both. Uh, I tend to, you know, block those things immediately as soon as I see them appear. Um, but uh, it's possible that they could have been something to do with those guys. Although I must admit that eight does sound a little bit too many. Um, but uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, catch you all in the next one. Uh, until then, bye bye.